Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wright here again. Thank you so much for taking part in the video so far this week. I know the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday videos aren't very exciting, but they are there to help develop your skills and keep them sharp. But as promised, on a Friday and a Monday, we'll be sharing this absolutely amazing story. I'd handpicked this ages ago when I was thinking about the kind of stories I want to share with you this year. And I think this is a great time to share this one. So here we are on the front cover of the book. It's called Arthur and the Golden Robe. And the first thing I noticed there reading that title is the shininess of the title. And it continues, the E swirls around in what I think is a very dark, gloomy forest. And because the forest is so dark and this robe is shining and shimmering, I'm starting to think that maybe this robe is a magical item. Maybe it's something magical uh, that Arthur uses in this story. And we've already met Arthur here. He's shining in the darkness. He's illuminated with his flame. This is his torch. And a torch, well, they didn't have batteries then. So a torch was a piece of wood with cloth wrapped around it and soaked in oil and lit to light the way. And little Arthur here, he looks like an ordinary boy, doesn't he? He's wearing very bright colours, which makes me think he's a happy, friendly person. But he doesn't look very happy at the moment. He's looking very gloomy. He's looking worried. And actually, he's looking straight at us. I think he wants our help. Maybe he's worried about the journey he's facing, travelling into these woods. And, of course, he hasn't noticed, which I'm sure you have, lurking in the darkness behind him is an enormous, colossal monster, or beast, you could say. It looks ferocious. And the thing I notice most are these great, sharp teeth and the saliva dripping down. I think he's hungry, and I think he wants to tear off our part and eat him. Now, this creature is very dark, isn't it? All the colours are dark, makes me think he's dangerous. And something I just spotted here. This looks like a tree trunk, but look. It's the beast's padded foot with his three hooked claws. Arthur's extremely close to danger. I wonder what kind of journey he's going on and what he's going to do with the golden rope. Let's have a look at the blurb on the back. Wow, we've got some other strange creatures here. I think these are mythical beasts, aren't they? Some strange serpent-like creature that seems to snake around these rocks. Some strange green goblin. Maybe that's its tail. And look. It looks like tiny, if I zoom in, little elves. Looks like they're playing a trumpet. He's wearing the same hat. Maybe they're his children. Not sure. I mean, this is definitely a dark, dangerous place. I don't see any leaves and flowers growing in this forest. It makes me think it's a very cold, frozen world. Let's have a little look at the blurb then. Buried amongst the treasures in Professor Brownstone's vault lie a humble collection of books. Oh, I love all this vocabulary here. So we've got a collection of books that are buried amongst the treasures. So we've got some books, they're all hidden underneath lots of different things, treasures in a vault. Now vaults like a bank vault, isn't it? Where you keep things safe that are worth lots of money. So we've got a character here, Professor Brownstone. So it's his vault and there must be his books. Now it's described the books as humble. Now that sort of suggests that the books look ordinary, but they're probably not. So let's find out. Filled with legendary stories from his ancestors, they tell of fearless fighters and unlikely heroes. Right, so these are not ordinary books. Legendary stories. So the legends. And it looks like his family members, his ancestors from long ago, have collected these stories. Or maybe the stories are about them. And fearless fighters, unlikely heroes. Now this is sounding exciting. 
I'd like to know more about these books. Join Arthur as we journey to the land of the Vikings in this exciting adventure from the Brownstones mythical collection. So, uh, Arthur is going on a journey, the land of the Vikings, right? The Vikings were, uh, had settled in England, hadn't they, at the same time as the Anglo-Saxons. So we know a bit about this. Uh, of course, it says exciting. That's fantastic. Right, let's find out a bit more. In a place filled with magical objects and powerful gods. Well, I remember some of the Anglo-Saxon gods. Sure. Uh, can Arthur conquer the fearsome mythical, mythical beast and save his town from freezing over? Oh, I love that word, conquer. Now, that's the word is huge word, isn't it? It means to sort of defeat, but... It must be a really big danger that he's got to defeat for a word like conquer. But then it does say the mythical beast. And on the front, wasn't there that beast in the forest? Maybe that's what it means. Now, I don't know what this is. His town's going to freeze over. That must be some sort of curse or a spell. Maybe he needs a magical object to prevent that or something. Maybe a powerful god made this curse or something. Well... Definitely want to find out. So let's turn over. So this story, or it's actually a graphic novel, which means it's set out like a comic book to make it very exciting. And that means the pictures tell as much of the story as the text. So we need to look very closely at the pictures too. Uh, it's written by Joe Todd Stanton. And actually, he's also the illustrator. And he's obviously very talented. Now, these illustrations are amazing. First thing I see are in each corner in colour. The only thing on colour in this are Thor, Freya, Balder and Odin. Now, they're gods, aren't they? They are definitely the Viking or the Norse gods. Vikings were also called Norse, weren't they? Uh, and they're also some of the Anglo-Saxon gods. I remember Thor and Freya, for sure. I remember Odin. So they must have shared similar ideas about the world and gods. Uh, Thor being the god of uh, thunder, Freya. It's the god of beauty. And now Balder, he, I don't remember him from the Anglo-Saxon gods, but I know that he was supposed to be invincible, indestructible. And I know that Odin was one of the wise gods, wasn't he? Sort of in charge of everything, if I remember rightly. Now, now if you spotted, there's two different maps here. Let's have a little look at this one. Now, this is a map. It's labelled Iceland. Now, Iceland is a real place. I'm sure you've heard of it or seen it on a map. It's an island, isn't it? Northwest of the United Kingdom. So, we've got the Atlantic Ocean to the south and to the north of Norwegian Sea. And, right, look, we've got mountain ranges. We have tree. Now, I think each tree maybe represents a forest or woods. Uh, I don't know, maybe is that a farm or a small village or town? Um, I really don't know what that is. Looks like a watchtower. If it was on the coast, I might have thought it was a lighthouse, but I'm not sure. Um, of course, there's this label here, Arthur's Town. Now, this must be where Arthur lives in. Look, there's a possessive apostrophe because the town belongs to him or he's part of the town. Now, there's a very strange symbol used for the town. It looks like a trophy with flames coming out of it. We'll have to look out for that. And what we've got here. Right, oh look, it's the Norse world. Yeah, this is the beliefs that the Norse of Vikings held about their world. They believed the gods lived here above in the world tree. And the middle land was where humans, where we live. And then the land of the dead. I wonder if Arthur has to journey to any of these places. Um... Maybe so, because there's a picture there. Let's get started. Oh, look how bright these pictures are. It's absolutely brilliant. Right, oh, we've got someone here. Oh, this must be uh, Professor Brownstone, wasn't it? Mentioned in the blurb. Right, he's talking to us. Look, speech bubble. I wonder where he's standing. There's a room full of things. Oh, this is his vault, isn't it? It's underground. It must be underneath his house can see the huge pillars holding up the house above. There's so many treasures his ancestors have collected. Let's see what he wants to tell us. 
Hello dear reader and welcome to the Brownstone Family Vault. Within this room lie artefacts of great power and rarity collected over thousands of years from every corner of the globe. Gosh, great words in there. Rarity, really like that. And we've got artefacts. Now an artefact is something special that archaeologists might find or anybody really and that's precious and rare means very hard to find or there's not many of them so I think Professor Brownstone and his family must be really into history and myths and legends and magic and obviously they like collecting. I'm just gonna pause here have a little look at what you can see in the vault. I'm really interested in what's hidden under this blanket. It seems to be chained up. No idea. This is an absolutely amazing picture. Let's see. Right, ah, oh, right, look. His collection of ordinary books. He must be having a drink of tea while he's reading one of these legends. I think Professor Brownstone's family are very rich. This looks like a very expensively decorated home, doesn't it? Let's see what Professor Brownstone has to say. My most treasured possession is actually this humble collection of books. They contain tales of lands and creatures long forgotten. As told by the people who collected these amazing objects, my ancestors. They include such adventures as... Well, let's have a look here. Then. Right, so these stories then are about his ancestors, aren't they? And they're about the lands they visited and the creatures they might have battled. So let's have a look at some of them might have seen. Eleanor Brownstone's discovery of the Crystal Kingdom and her subsequent death defying escape. Right, so she's Eleanor, right, so she must have been an ancestor from a while ago. She's journeyed to the Crystal Kingdom. Subsequent is a great word. So subsequently, she's had to escape. So it means once she got there, there's a reason that she then had to escape. And we can see here, she's been faced with well, sort of living skeletons. I would definitely run away. And she's carrying what looks to me like a piece of the Crystal Kingdom. Well, no wonder they're after her. They're not happy. Right, here's another one of the legends. My great-great-grandfather, Eric Brownstone's epic battle with the hundred-headed snake king of the Tuckernuck Island. Right, look at this. So he's obviously had to travel across the sea to this island. There's a fierce storm happening while he's battling this. What was it called? A hundred-headed snake. It looks like he's had to maybe chop the heads off to defeat it. I wonder what trophy brought back from that journey. Down here it says, and many others. Right, I'm already very excited. I wonder if Arthur's story is in one of these books too. So it seems to me like Professor Brownstone is going to be narrating this story, isn't he? He's speaking to us through the text and most of the story is being told through these pictures, these illustrations. Now I really love these very short little snips, snippets of these two stories. I think it would be a great idea to maybe have a go at writing our own so let's have a go at writing our own little synopsis for some of the Brownstone's uh, epic journeys. Uh, taking out Eleanor's so that we can use this one to edit to create our own version. Now you could have a go at writing a few of these. Uh, I'm going to give you an example here to show you how you could have a go at it. Um, now here we could change Eleanor Brownstone. We could maybe keep it out as a Brownstone family member or you could even maybe use your own family name and do them for your own family members. I'm going to keep Brownstone and I'm going to just choose, 
I'm going to change it to just Lucy, just to make it different. And of course, it's still going to be brownstone. Now, you might notice there's a possessive and apostrophe S there, and that's because the discovery belongs to Lucy, or it belonged to Eleanor in this version. So once you've got your name, uh, we can move on. So the discovery of the something, something. Now, in this version, it was a place, the Crystal Kingdom. Uh, you could have a place. You could have the Fiery Kingdom uh, or the Treacherous Sea. Uh, or those two words could actually be an item, maybe one of the things in Professor's uh, vault. Um, I'm going to put magical item. Uh, first thing that jumps out is golden. I think I've stole that idea from the golden rope. Uh, I may have better ideas later, my first one. Uh, so I've got golden. Now a magical item, it tends to be uh, ordinary objects. So I'm going to think of something quite ordinary. It could be... Um, maybe a fork. Who knows what a golden fork does? But anyway, it's what I've chose. And so we've got Lucy Brownstone's discovery of the golden fork. And now it's going to be a her. Now you might have a male name. Of course, you'll need his, won't you? Uh, but I'm going to take that out because mine is a her. And her death defying escape. So I've created a whole new synopsis there. Uh, it's very easy to edit that further. You could change the name. You could change the object. You could put a place in there. Um, the discovery could be changed. Now that could be changed to a battle. So Lucy Brown Soul's battle with the something something, the colossal demon. So there's loads of ways you can edit this. So have a go yourself, maybe write a couple, and I can't wait to see you again for the next one where we share the next part of the story. Bye.